I got 10 years to fill a stadium, but only two minutes to fill your cranium. Humble the poet, signing in. I'm sorry for not releasing a video this weekend. I am sick as a dog. I've been coughing up green shit, making other irresponsible adult decisions, which probably have slowed down my healing. But I did spend most of the weekend sleeping. So you're chilling, you're having a wonderful day, the sun is shining, your beard is shining, everything is going wonderful. Then all of a sudden, boom, you get hit with a depressing thought. And it could be anything, but a simple, tiny depressing thought can take you down the rabbit hole towards more, larger, more depressing thoughts. And there goes your day, or does it? Here are three simple tips to dealing with depressing thoughts. Number one, change the channel. Remember, your thoughts paint your life. So if you're thinking sad shit, you're going to have a sad life. Well, I'm humble, I can't switch my thoughts. I'm not a magician. Thanks for bringing that up, my handsome friend. Sometimes you may need to do a little extra to change the channel, but remember, changing the channel is essential. Maybe you gotta actively get up and change your environment. Maybe you gotta watch something funny on YouTube. Try doing 15 push-ups. Do anything and everything to change your current mood and get you into a new channel. Sitting around and letting those thoughts fester and grow is not gonna help. And while you're changing the channel, we can do number two as well. Number Two, find the root. Instead of moving forward with the sad thought, let's go backwards and figure out where the sad thought came from. So when you feel that sad thought, stop and ask yourself, where did this come from? Maybe you saw some shit on social media that triggered a memory. Maybe somebody you don't like is doing something better and you noticed that and now that got you reevaluating your whole existence. Maybe you heard a song that reminded you of a sad time. Whatever it is, figure it out. Knowing what triggers those sad thoughts is what's gonna help you know what to avoid so more sad thoughts are not being triggered. But humble, I can't unfollow people I don't like on social media. They might figure it out. Well, my handsome friend, if keeping other people happy is more important than keeping yourself happy, then maybe you should get used to having depressing thoughts. Step three, write about it. No, I didn't say vlog about it or blog about it. I said write about it. Self-awareness is a wonderful tool to combat a lot of the challenges that we have in life including depressing thoughts. Keeping track of your thoughts in a journal is a great way of discovering patterns and triggers of what makes these thoughts exist. It will also teach you much more about yourself and why such thoughts even exist in the first place. Writing about your feelings is also a form of venting, but instead of venting to a person who doesn't want or is unable to help you, you're doing it for yourself. Cause no one can care about you more than you can care about yourself. But humble, all of this sounds like so much work. Can't I just take a pill or some drugs to feel better? I'm glad you asked my handsome friend. If you keep looking for the easy way out, you might find yourself in a worse position than you are in right now. This is your happiness and you need to put in the effort and the drive to fight for it. Cause no one else can fight for your happiness more than you. And no one else has more control over your feelings than you. As Abraham Lincoln says, yeah, the guy in the American Penny, folks are usually about as happy as they make their minds up to be. I know a lot of you have offered to get me new quote glasses, but we have to approve the new quote glasses. We're gonna have certain rules, but what makes a cool quote glass? And then maybe if you guys have a dope pair, you guys can send them to me and I can break them too. So decide how happy you wanna be and get to work. If you have any more tips on how you deal with your depressing thoughts, leave them in the comments below and share them with the community. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please comment, rate, and subscribe. If you like the way I think and the things I say, these are inspired by my books, Unlearn and Unlearn Beneath the Surface. I'm waiting for Unlearn Beneath the Surface to arrive. It should be coming to my house in boxfuls in the next couple of days. Uh, and once I have that, maybe I can film myself unboxing it. It's like a new baby coming home for the first time. In the meantime, please make sure you subscribe. Not only subscribe, hit the notification button. So if you're on mobile, it's a little bell. If you're on the computer, it's a little gear. And that'll make sure you don't miss any of these videos. I really appreciate the time you took to watch this. Please share this with somebody that you like or somebody that you don't. Much love. It's always that tiny gap of anticipation that impacts us the most. Because in that tiny gap, there's a lot of I don't know what's about to happen. In many ways, that's dope. And in many ways, it's not. Because those milliseconds of the unknown can either make us very excited or extremely terrified. Whenever we do something new, those milliseconds of unknown can scare the shit out of us because we don't know what's going to happen. And sometimes we think about what can go wrong. Who are we kidding? It's not just sometimes. We're always thinking what can go wrong. And when we see other people doing dope shit, we think to ourselves, wow, how did they overcome the fear? But the truth is, they didn't. They felt the fear, but kept moving.